World Health Organization is considering whether to update its guidance about the routine wearing of face masks to prevent the spread of the virus. It comes amid reports that the White House may recommend that Americans wear them. New research has suggested that coughs and sneezes may be projected much further than previously thought. And tonight, New York's mayor has just been telling the city's residents to wear face masks to prevent the virus spreading. Our science editor, David Shookman, has more details. The shocking power of a sneeze. But do we know for certain how far it might project coronavirus? That's the question now being assessed, and it could change how we respond to the pandemic. According to the World Health Organization, the infection can be spread to anyone up to a metre away. The advice of the British government and many others is that two metres can be considered a safe distance. But research in the United States shows that coughing can project small droplets up to six metres and that sneezing can go even further up to eight metres. Now, there's no definitive proof that coronavirus can be spread that far. But there are scientists who believe that that possibility must be considered. Special cameras in the United States captured a sneeze. Some droplets stay close, but tiny ones go further than previously thought. And the scientists involved say wearing masks could reduce the risk of infection. It is important to account, however, for the fact that these masks are not sealed, not the high-grade masks, are not protective from the inhalation of those invisible small particulates. So it's important to not be overconfident when wearing them as a way to protecting oneself against the inhalation of those, of, of those droplets. It's more about protecting others from our own exhalations. Everyone who has to leave their house has to wear a face mask. A promotional video in the Czech Republic. And more and more countries, including the US, Everyone. are considering similar rules. In Austria, supermarkets are insisting that they're warm. But for the experts assessing whether masks really help, there are concerns about how they might be used. It might be that wearing a mask is equally as effective or more effective than distancing, provided that mask is worn properly and provided that people don't infect themselves when they're taking the mask off and touch an outer surface which may be contaminated. For health workers, getting this right is critical. The message from the new research is that the virus can reach further than you might think, making it harder to stay safe. David Shookman, BBC News. Like many areas of the economy, the coronavirus crisis has decimated the catering industry as venues across the country have been forced to close and events have been cancelled. But some hospitality companies, more used to providing food for art galleries, weddings and big business, are now attempting to use their workforce and their skills to help those in need. Our social affairs correspondent Alison Holt reports. At this Yorkshire kitchen, the chefs are turning their attention from catering for corporate events and the nearby Hepworth Gallery to providing meals for frontline NHS staff and vulnerable homeless people, doing what they do best to keep people going. It's not about making profit, it's just purely about keeping the guys in work and feeding those most in need at this moment in time. And we used to do in high-end gourmet food, you know, we do private dining in multi-millionaires' homes and now we're doing, you know, ready meals, frozen, ready to microwave. It's a complete contrast. And nearly 200 miles south, this London catering company is using the skills of its chefs, many with Michelin star backgrounds, to provide meals for people stuck at home and desperately in need. Jimmy, who runs the firm, is also more used to high-end dinners and pop-up restaurants, but the shutdown meant a rethink. I think when I first found out on the Monday, it was like almost grieving, so that kind of like panic, shock, you know, can't believe it, and then it really turned into action, so what can we do to try and, try and help, really? Donations are allowing both kitchens to get food out to those in difficult circumstances. The meals they're making here will go to a range of people who are vulnerable and having to isolate themselves at home, whether that's because they're elderly, disabled or have a cancer diagnosis. And the need for these meals is huge. In London, Jimmy's Food is being distributed by Age UK volunteers, along with store cupboard essentials. Locally, they've had more than 350 requests for food in 10 days. 
One of the biggest things that clients say to us is that we're taking away that bit of stress and anxiety out of their lives because they know that a regular meal, regular food is coming their way. At the end of the food line are people like 76-year-old Agatha, who is self-isolating after an operation. I don't, know, I don't know how to praise them enough. It clearly makes a difference to you knowing that people are thinking about you. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, especially when you're alone. Especially when you're alone. Each meal, one of many signs of people using different skills to ease pressures where they can. Alison Holt, BBC News. Well, that's it from us. We'll leave you with some of the images from tonight's thank you from across the country to NHS staff and carers and all of Britain's key workers. Good night.